Now that Sam Bankman Freed is, well, freed, we'll take a look at just what lovely accommodations he had as he made his way back to his parents' home in California, and the collapse of FTX has put a ton of pressure on Gary Gensler's SEC and their crypto enforcement strategy, how they've gone after companies like Library and Ripple, and where they're going to go next. There's a piece that just came out last night in the Wall Street Journal I want to take a dive into because I think there's some valuable insights. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. I'm sure you are well aware by now that Sam Bankman Freed has been freed from prison on a massive bond. But as he got to make his way back to California to be in the custody of his parents, he got to have some pretty nice digs on the way and some nice accommodations on the flight. You can see some photos of him in the business class lounge at JFK on his way out. You can see him in business class flying back to California. What do you think? Should he be flying business class back to his parents' mansion or should he be sitting in a jail cell this holiday season? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Certainly, that's better than the, the cell he was sitting in when he was in the Bahamas. So it looks like he's gotten a pretty sweet deal to get out at least. But with other former FTX uh, officials, executives uh, turning on him a bit and starting to testify and seeing billions of dollars of customer funds being lent out to executives, it'll be interesting to see how this finally plays out. Do make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you up to date on anything new there, especially on the SEC side, what charges they decide uh, to continue to pursue. If there's any kind of deal there, we'll keep an eye out. Interestingly enough, in the headlines today as well, a former uh, CFTC commissioner that was wined and dined by SBF and FTX has uh, put in a resignation it should be out next month. So I think we're starting to see more of the dominoes fall and hopefully some of the corruption will get further exposed. And the pressure is certainly mounting on regulators. This collapse has put a lot of pressure on Gary Gensler, who's tried to defend his strategy to hold the sector to existing laws rather than write new rules. But this has obviously been a flat-out failure. SEC Chair Gensler's pushing to hold crypto firms to the same rules that apply to stocks and bonds rather than write a new raft of regulation for the crypto industry. But that puts him at odds with some lawmakers who say the collapse of SBF's FTX trading platform shows that crypto needs its own set of guardrails and point out that Gensler's enforcement strategy moved too slowly to stop FTX from imploding. Gensler, we know as a veteran regulator who was nominated by President Biden over a year ago and hasn't included major crypto regulations among the more than 40 rules he's proposed or finalized since taking the reins at the SEC in April of 2021. Rather, he demanded crypto firms comply with existing requirements for exchanges, broker-dealers, and public companies. I'm very proud of what we've done and proud of the public voice as well, he said in a recent interview. Let me know what you think. Should Gensler be proud of his accomplishments at the SEC thus far? Comment down below. Gensler's added more enforcement attorneys to the SEC's crypto and cyber unit and shifted the litigation strategy from focusing on individual tokens to the platforms that sell cryptos to investors. His reasoning, there's more than 10,000 cryptos in existence, but only a handful of major platforms that cater to U.S. investors. Since back in 2018, the SEC's brought and settled more than 90 lawsuits related to cryptos. We've seen cases where there's been a settlement. We've seen the SEC win, like against Library. We've seen the two-year battle against Ripple, this ongoing fight that's now hit that major anniversary and looks to continue into 2023. More than 30 of these, though, have come during Gensler's time in office. The SEC chief has said the vast majority of cryptos are securities, 
like stocks and bonds, it should follow the agency's rigorous disclosure requirements before being sold to the investing public. The SEC filed suit on Wednesday, which we looked at in some detail, against two associates of SBF. The agency also joined other federal agencies in suing SBF after FTX filed for bankruptcy. It alleged the executives defrauded investors, including major venture capital firms. We also talked about that. The VC firms are the ones who are getting the protection from the SEC, not the retail investors. A sad state of affairs. Indeed. But the SEC's action didn't come soon enough to protect FTX customers who've been frozen out of their accounts and now face a long and uncertain path to recovering their assets. The SEC hasn't written rules and has failed to foresee and prevent disasters in the industry to protect consumers from Terra Luna to FTX, said Rep. Uh, Josh Gottheimer, who's from New Jersey in a hearing last week, referring to the cryptos that collapsed earlier this year. Now, he is a member of the Congressional Blockchain Caucus and received nearly $20,000 in campaign donations from crypto executives, including SBF, ahead of those 2022 midterms. Industry advocates have characterized the FTX implosion as a classic fraud rather than evidence of inherent problems in crypto. And really, it has come to light that this is just outright fraud on the part of SBF, not related to the assets themselves, but really the scheme and structure that he built into FTX to take customer funds and misappropriate them. The FTX fiasco they continue has brought heightened scrutiny of the SEC and its smaller sister agency, the CFTC, which regulates derivatives and is vying for greater jurisdiction over crypto markets. CFTC Chair Benham said in a hearing on December 1st that FTX's collapse showed why his agency should be given authority to oversee markets for the small number of cryptos the SEC has declined to pursue, such as Bitcoin. Gensler did lead the F uh, CFTC previously under President Obama. He said that he would support Congress giving that agency more powers to regulate such assets, what they're calling digital asset commodities versus digital asset securities. But he said last month that the most recent attempt by lawmakers to write a bill for that purpose was too light touch. The risk, he said, is that the new legislation could create loopholes that undermine a $100 trillion market for U.S. stocks and bonds in order to accommodate a crypto market currently worth less than $1 trillion globally. Gensler and his staff have tried to negotiate with crypto platforms on a model for registering before its downfall FTX had partnered with stock exchange operator IEX Group and was working on a plan to set up a licensed crypto platform with the SEC. Rival Coinbase has also met with the SEC but isn't close to a framework that it believes works as reported by the Wall Street Journal. Complying with the SEC is unappealing for crypto firms, trading platforms that currently operate as exchanges. Uh, brokers and custodians of assets would have to break those functions up into separate entities to avoid conflicts of interest that would likely have to stop or they'd have to likely stop listing all but a handful of tokens that either the SEC agrees aren't securities or that have themselves registered with the agency and filed disclosures. This is the real problem is without the clear guidelines to know what is or isn't a security without a clear registration process. If something is deemed to be a digital asset security, you've got 10,000 digital assets with no path forward. So it's really key to get that clarity. Some academics have noted that U.S. regulators' reluctance to accommodate crypto firms has likely limited the knock-on effects that the current downturn in crypto prices might have otherwise had on the broader economy. In an interview, Gensler said the SEC hasn't taken meaningful steps during his tenure to contain the risk and limit wrongdoing in the crypto markets. During his first few months in the office that he now holds, he met with industry leaders and delivered his core message that he repeats all the time, come into compliance with SEC reg uh, regulations or face enforcement. In September of last year, 2021, the SEC subpoenaed the developer behind uh, Terra USD and Luna, the crypto as referred to by Gottheimer earlier. They crashed about eight months later. Gensler said he moved quickly to limit Americans' access to crypto platforms that offer investors a yield on their deposits. Such platforms look and feel like online banks but don't comply with bank oversight. Less than five months after Gensler took office, the SEC notified Coinbase it would sue the firm if it offered a yield-bearing crypto product to ordinary investors. 
Coinbase Chief Brian Armstrong accused the SEC of really sketchy behavior, but ultimately scuttled the plan. Since then, a succession of crypto lending platforms have frozen withdrawals or filed for bankruptcy after making bad loans with customer deposits, C, Voyager, Celsius, and BlockFi. We chose strategically to really focus our attention on that, Gensler said, noting that yield-bearing crypto products had been proliferating rapidly in the summer of 21, and I'm very proud that the crypto lending footprint in the U.S., non-compliant as it is, is much smaller today, he said. However, Gensler did all of this too late. Did his actions prevent Voyager or Celsius from their bankruptcies? Did it prevent the BlockFi bankruptcy, or did it cause the BlockFi bankruptcy? We saw BlockFi was driven to the arms of FTX after facing that $100 million penalty from the SEC. The SEC is their second largest creditor in their bankruptcy. They already paid a massive amount, tens of millions, to the SEC previously from money they got from FTX that FTX stole from customer accounts. So what's going on here with the SEC? What do you think? Let me know if Gary Gensler's on the right path. I certainly have my own opinion as to where I think he's going with his so-called strategy, but I'm curious to know more on your thoughts. Please elaborate below. Let me know what you're thinking. This collapse of FTX is just the latest in Gensler's failures this year to provide clarity and to really key in on fraud. They continue to drag on the Ripple case, which is a non-fraud case. Meanwhile, the fraudulent actors have been running amok. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure to hit a like on your way out. It helps the channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Have a very happy holiday season celebrating as you choose. And I hope that it's a great time with friends, family, and more. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you through the last week of the year and as we move on to 2023. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.